رباه عفوك إني للنور مدة يداي نزعت أسرار قلبي وجبت ألقي أسايا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهد الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وشهد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن محمدا عبده رسول يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاتي ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أسق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first and last the one we worship and worship alone We bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the last and final messenger sent to humanity <coughs> I remind us all to have taqwa of Allah to have God consciousness and to not die except in a state of submission to Allah except in a state of Islam when we began the first Jum'ah of Ramadan, we talked about sort of how we got to this point in the McKinney Islamic Association history and what sort of built up to this point and particularly my reflections as someone who has relatively uh, newer to the community. Today, inshallah, we will look forward. We will look at the future, inshallah, as we move into this goal of moving into a new building, insha'Allah ta'ala. But of course, as Muslims, we always give credit back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when, it ta when we talk about the future, we always know that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the future. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ وَيُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْثَ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَى وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتِ there are certain things only Allah has knowledge of. Allah has knowledge of when the Day of Judgment is. Nobody knows when the Day of Judgment is. Now He's given us signs, and we know that it's a whole lot closer now than it was a hundred years ago, but we don't know exactly. In fact, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is the Prophet ﷺ being sent to begin with. But we don't know the exact time. That is only up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when that will happen. When the rains come down, that is controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the weatherman. The weatherman makes a forecast. And sometimes it's right. If everyone could please move forward. Please, inshallah. There's many people coming. Um, so please, please move forward. The weatherman makes a forecast wrong quite often. If it's the same weatherman on the Apple weather, wrong very often. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when He's going to send that rain, when it's going to stop, how long it's going to go. And living in Texas, we can truly understand only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can control that and know. Because nobody can predict the weather here. So Allah has this knowledge. He knows what's in the wounds. Forget about predicting or telling you, you know, what, what child someone is going to expect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows before there's any, uh, before it even starts. No test can tell you that three years from now you're going to have a daughter. Or five years from now you're going to have a There's no test. And even the ones I've seen, after this whole process, they say 99.9% .9 accurate. Not a hundred percent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows before any of this. And He always will. This is knowledge of the unseen. This is knowledge of the future. No one knows what they're going to earn tomorrow. I'm sure we all have stories. We thought we would be doing one thing and now we're doing something completely different. We don't know where it's going to be in five years from now. Is the business still going to be there? Is the job going to be there? That is knowledge of the unseen. That's knowledge of the future. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And no one knows where they're going to die. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we can buy a, a plot 
and say that this is where we think we're going to die, but we don't know. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and He is the all-knowing and no one else knows except Allah. That being said, our test in this life is to plan for the future as if we will live here forever knowing full well that we will not. And we will be responsible for that. You can't, for example, say, I'm just going to neglect my kids because that's going to happen in the future, they'll grow older and that's not in my... No, absolutely not. Our effort is what is judged. And we know that Allah tells us, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah doesn't waste a believer's effort. What a powerful verse. Nothing we do is wasted. Sometimes we see the results of our actions. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes things get worse. Sometimes they get better. Sometimes the whole cycle goes through. But our point, our mission is, we have to exalt the effort. That's what we're responsible for. So when it comes to our new masjid plan, inshallah, that is what we have to do. We have to exert the effort. With that being said, what are some things to be aware of and cautious as we move into this phase? The first point I'm going to repeat from the first Jummah because it relates not just to how we got here, but also in the future. And I think it's so crucial that it was worth repeating again. And that is, just enjoy the moment while we are still here. Just enjoy it. It is really nice to be able to meet the entire community every time we come here. You can, you know, as soon as you get out and you enter the doorway, you see everybody. You don't miss anyone when we're here. Because that is the beauty of having a tight, intimate space. I speak to people in surrounding Masajid, and now they have beautiful buildings, mashallah. Many of them say, we kind of miss that small place. It was more intimate, we knew each other better. But the reality is, we need a space. I mean, we have people praying outside. What happens when Ramadan, in a year or two, when it's freezing outside? They can't pray outside. Even just this year alone, we had to cancel uh, the outside space because of rain. We have a, a sister section. I don't even know if we can call it a section. It's like a few rows, especially on Friday. So there's absolutely a need. And there's, there's not a competition. You know, you know what I think of it like? I think of it like, like your kids. So people always tell you, enjoy them when they're young. Right? Enjoy them when they're young. Yes, alhamdulillah. But they're going to get older. And when they get older, that has its own, you know, joy, joyous moments. Marriage, grandchildren, accomplishments. Like we can't stop it. We can't keep them young forever. We can't just all squeeze in here forever. We can't do that. But we can enjoy it while we have it. So get to know each other while it's easy. Before, we are in a larger place where we can't have that. Ideally, we would take that sense of community in, inshallah. So this is uh, the first point. The second, whenever you're going for a big target, this is not just a masjid, this is true in life in general, there's a lot of people that talk. And they talk, and they don't really do anything productive. How do we deal with them? When ignorant people address the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, Peace to you. I have better things to do than engaging in this argument. There's going to be people who are going to be very negative. How is this going to happen? It's not realistic. We're not going to be able to do it in the community. And when that stuff spreads, it's like poison. Right? And then you start thinking, well, yeah, maybe we're not. And then maybe someone gets discouraged. And that's not what we need. We need everybody on board. And you don't even have to go that far to see what, when, when that happens. Just look around. Alhamdulillah. The project always finishes. So we can be part of it or we can be those on the sidelines drinking haterade. And then what's going to happen when the, when the masjid opens inshallah? They'll all be right there. And we'll be thinking weren't you like telling us this wasn't going to happen? Go back and drink your haterade. Right? So this is, this is very uh, dangerous. This stuff can rip communities apart. So we have to be positive and 
know that there's a lot of planning that went into this. There's a lot of effort for, for a very long time. It didn't just start this year. This has been years in the making. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to see it through to uh, fruition. Remember uh, the hadith we spoke about a couple of, uh, uh, this previous week in the taraweeh. People are like a hundred camels. There's only a few that are reliable out of that hundred. So when we look at the community, you know, we have about 500 families consistently, and the brothers broke it down. Those 500 are going to build the community. It's not going to be every single person that comes. And chances are the ones that aren't doing anything are the ones where you know, sitting on the sidelines with the chatter. So ignore them, you know, when, and be positive, counter them with optimism. So inshallah, everything continues to move forward smoothly. As, whenever things naturally get bigger and better, there's going to be a real test which comes, whether, again, whether it's building this masjid or any organization, and that is the test of sicknesses of the heart. This is when the true colors of people come. And so now, love of leadership, jealousy, anger and hatred, these things start to manifest. We need to be very, very cautious of these. Because one of the missions of the Prophet ﷺ was what? him To purify us of these things. And it only takes a few to bring the entire project down. We've seen this happen. So we have to be very cautious. I still, I never understood, I still don't understand how egos and these things get involved in building a masjid. This is not going to turn into Google and be a, you know, a 90 billion dollar network. There's nobody's making any money here in the masjid. You know, you're not going to get famous by working in a masjid. But this is the mentality people have, and they bring it in. Even people very successful on the outside. So again, I don't understand it. But we have to be aware of it. And, then, and that's part of brotherhood and sisterhood and keeping each other in check. And when the community is tight and open, then they're receptive to feedback. And say, so, you know what, you're right. We welcome what you said. You're absolutely right. You're correct. I did go a little bit overboard here. I shouldn't have done this. So inshallah, we can work on building that foundation now before we move into the new building. Bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Qur'an doesn't just teach us how to act like a believer. It teaches us how to think like a believer. If we don't have the mentality, then we're not going to do the actions. And one of the things that we need to accomplish any major project is the belief that we're actually going to be able to do it. McKinney is a top-tier city. The McKinney Islamic Association is a top-tier masjid. It's not some masjid on a border town that serves five people. It is, and it, and it has been, right? And the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that it is now. But there has to be this belief. You know, I've, I've been in other communities, not even half the size here, a fraction of the resources, and they built the $3 million masjid, which now is probably worth more, and that was a decade ago, which is worth more than what this project is going to cost us. So how were they able to do that? Because people had belief, oh, we can do it. doesn't matter how small we are. We have the intention and we can move forward. And so that is what we need as well, inshallah, so that uh, we are not falling behind in our projections. Finally, the most important thing to remember is that a building doesn't mean anything if we're not building people in that building. If we have this beautiful masjid and there's no youth there, then it's a failed project. If we have this beautiful masjid and there's no learning going on there, it's a failed project. The emphasis always needs to be at people. 
or on people. And those things don't contradict each other. We can have both, alhamdulillah. But sometimes people get so obsessed with just the, the building and the physical space, now they start cutting corners here and there, which are all related to people. Beautiful, if you have beautiful masjid and you don't have any religious leadership, then it doesn't matter. And there are masajid like that. There's no one to lead this big, beautiful ship. Because everything was just exhausted into the building. So no matter whether we're in here or whether we're there, wherever we are, inshallah, we always want to emphasize and prioritize that building people is always what comes first. Now, practically speaking, how do we take part in it? We know when we're gone, there's not much that's going to benefit us when we die. So the concept of sadaqa jariya, continuous charity, which keeps giving, now that can be in the form of knowledge, it can be in, in the form of something else, like building an orphanage, that will continue to get us rewards even when we are gone. Now, the, the nice thing about a masjid is it's not going anywhere. It's going to be there when we're long gone, which means the reward will continue to be accrued. So, if you are, for example, um, uh, donating for one of the pillars, so $5,000 for a pillar, literally a pillar of the masjid, then you know, inshallah, every time somebody makes sijda in that masjid, every child that learns to read Qur'an in that masjid, everybody who learns some knowledge in that masjid, it all is going to go back to you when you and I are long gone. So this is a, a mentality that we want to have so that we are benefiting insha'Allah ta'ala. So we invite you all again tomorrow to the groundbreaking. Insha'Allah it should be a very uh, busy weekend. Walhamdulillah. We have our khatam al-Qur'an tonight. Uh, we will have the, the khatam dua in, in the witr prayer in Arabic and then we'll have a short English dua after. We will have uh, the suhoor at 2.30 with... Halva Puri, if you don't know what that is, it might be the eighth wonder of the world. Then we have uh, the, the Qiyam layl the Tahajjud prayer at 3.30. And take advantage, use those few moments in the night. Definitely give yourself some time to be by yourself. It's very, very important uh, during these times. Take advantage of what's there, but also give yourself some time to be uh, on your own. And if it is Laylatul Qadr, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach it and to, to be pleased with us. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami wal-alim wa tub alayna innaka anta al-tawab rahim Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar Allahumma ansur ikhwanana fi kulli makan ya arham al-rahimin Subhanu rabbika rabbin izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa qiyam al-salam